Hey guys, welcome back for another video. I wanted to share with you guys today some of our homeschool curriculum for this upcoming year. This company is one that I have used from the beginning. Um, they are the very first curriculum I used and I love them. I have gone away from them a couple of years and I always seem to come back again. They have just, they have great books and it's just a good solid education. So. We are using them again this year. It is uh, called Heart of Dakota, and my little boys who are six and seven and will be turning seven and eight this coming year are gonna be using Beyond Little Hearts for His Glory, and that's what I'm gonna show you guys today. I still have a couple of decisions to make as far as math and language arts for them. Um, I have used some of the good and the beautiful in the past for language arts and math. However, this year I'm I'm not sure if I'm just gonna stick with Heart of Dakota's choices or if we're gonna go with um, The Good and the Beautiful. I, I'm kind of leaning at this moment towards just the Heart of Dakota choices because uh, my little boys last year, we dropped the language arts at one point that we were doing with The Good and the Beautiful because they just, um, they do better with Heart of Dakota's. Um, simple and effective choices and it just it just worked better for us so I think we might continue that this year um, I'm still deciding I'll do another video on that later <laughs> so let's get into just um, showing you guys all about Heart of Dakota's Beyond Little Hearts for His Glory here is everything for Heart of Dakota's Beyond Little Hearts for His Glory uh, plus a few extras I have out here on the table and I'm going to show you all of these different resources and just explain how I've done this in the past with some of my other kids and how I plan to do it this year. So let's just start right here. This is their catalog and my table is like tacky. I actually just painted this recently and um, I'm not sure that I'm loving it. I really do like it, but I, need, I don't know. It needs like some distressing or something and it needs some kind of coat of something on top so it's not sticky it's like it's not wet or anything because it's been a day or two since I finished painting it but um yeah so that's what that sticky sound is <laughs> this is still a work in progress this table so here is their most recent catalog um, and don't don't be put off by the covers of their books these kids are actually uh, models that they had that were their their own kids or like cousins or something I can't remember exactly but these kids this picture was taken of um, the family and friends that actually of the lady that wrote this book so um, it's special to them I'm sure but um so don't be put off just by by a cover don't ever judge a book by its cover right so here's their most recent catalog and I'm just gonna show you um, Beyond Little Hearts for His Glory. And I'll walk you through this because you can get this catalog for free if you're interested in looking into their curriculum or you can find them online. So this is supposed to be for six to eight years old and you've got all of these different books that go along with this program. So inside the guide you have these different boxes. I'm gonna show you that. There's um, learning through history side, and there's learning the basics side. So this is what it actually looks like. So you've got learning through history, and you've got learning the basics. And I don't have the most recent copy of this teacher's guide. I have um, an, a little bit older one. So if you get a brand new guide, all of these little icons are in color now. Um, and I love colors, so I am super tempted to just get a new teacher's manual, but I don't need a new teacher's manual. I don't need to buy a new teacher's manual. So this is a day. This is your whole day. These two pages contain everything that you're going to be doing for the day, and it's written out um, in an easy-to-see way. So you've got these different boxes that show you the different areas that you're going to be learning in with your child. When you go and you order this, you'll see the economy package. And the economy package is these books right here. You've got, these are your history books and they're like, the, they're the spine of this program. So you've got American Pioneers and Patriots and guys, I love this book. This is one of my favorite history books for little kids. I read through this with my girls a few years ago and 
and it's just, it's really enjoyable. It's not too long, not too short. It's not your typical um, like textbook because there's stories in here. Really engaging. Um, I'll do maybe a review on this book at another time. And then you've got stories of the pilgrims. And again, the cover of this book is an older cover. When I bought this, this is, um, this is a couple of years old. So if you buy a new set from them, the cover looks like this now. It's a little different. So they've updated this book apparently, but this is also an excellent book that I really enjoyed with my kids. And then you need this Boys and Girls of Colonial Days. So all three of these books, I highly recommend. They are, they're good. They're very good. And then you'll need to choose your, um, your reading portion, like your phonics instruction. So kids at this age are usually still going through phonics and they suggest these three. The reading lesson, reading made easy, or sound bites. Again, don't judge a book by its cover. These are all excellent choices. They're not like the most um, modern, pretty books in the world, but they work so well. And what I've actually used for years is the reading lesson, this right here. I've used this for, let's see, how many kids have gone through this now? I have three that have gone through this completely and two, my two little boys that are still working through it. So, and it doesn't come this way. It comes just like, like this book here, this kind of binding. But I cut the binding off at one point. I'm not sure that I would do it again if I had the choice to do it again. Um, it it kind of works for us though, because then we can fold this over like this. If you have a child that gets kind of overwhelmed by seeing two pages at once, it's just, I don't know, I think it um, I think it kind of cuts down on extra distraction. It helps them not to feel so overwhelmed to be able to do that. So I cut the binding off. I have two of these because I have my two boys that are using this book right now. So um, I just went ahead and found a second one on Amazon when my youngest son started reading this book and his older brother was not quite done yet. I'll just show you real quick inside. Uh, I keep just a sticky note, not a sticky note, it's a sticky tab on the page that we're on and I move it each day. I love these things. I have some right here. These little post-it sticky tabs, I use them on all of our books. They work great as a bookmark. Uh, they don't, you know, they don't just fall out of the book if some child decides to pick up their book and run off with it. <laughs> so it works good for us and if you get this reading lesson, you can go to the website for the reading lesson and you can actually print this off. They have it as a free printable. And what I do is I let my boys write their name on it when they started reading this. Uh, I never did write in the start date, but that's okay. They get to put stars on it whenever they finish um, a chapter. I call it a chapter, it's, it's their lessons. So it says teach your child to read in 20 easy lessons. So there's 20 of these chapters or lessons and each time they finish one they get to put a star on their little chart here here's my levi who is seven turning eight this is how far he's gone and he can probably breeze through the rest of this pretty easily he's picked up on reading pretty well so both of my boys i expect this coming year will probably finish the reading lesson definitely levi uh, Marcus, I think he will as well. We usually read um, like one or two pages a day when they first start out and then they'll start reading more like two or three pages a day until they're done with this book and it works really well. I just literally curl up on the couch with them and read it and they love that and I love that. It's It kind of feels like the pressure's off we're just reading this and enjoying this time together on the couch and yeah, it's worked really well. When they're done with the reading lesson or whichever of these three reading choices, phonics reading choices you choose, they'll move into this emerging reader set. So that is right here. These are the emerging reader books and they will gradually read through each of these and they slowly get a little bit more difficult as they move on. And this is actually the same book um, this is the older version and this is the brand new one they just came out right. with. So that's the emerging readers there. We've got the early readers Bible, 
Owl at Home, Frog and Toad All Year, Frog and Toad are Friends, Wagon Wheels, Mamelia Bedelia, Buffalo Bill and the Pony Express, Prairie School, First Flight, Tornado, um, Animal Adventures, this is like a little house, yeah, little house chapter book, Animal Adventures, The Bears on Hemlock Mountain, and that's it for the Emerging Readers, and then what I already showed you, those, um, the Christian Liberty, where did it go? The Christian Liberty um, Nature Readers, wherever I put them. Oops, I forgot one. Then we have The Courage of Sarah Noble, and those are part of the Emerging Readers. So these books here are ones that I picked up that are also suggested in the back of the teacher manual. You have a schedule for emerging readers. And as you go through this each week, there's a supplement title that'll be listed. The Little Red Lighthouse and the Great Gray Bridge. I actually don't think I have that one. But I've collected several of these anyway and they've been enjoyable. My kids like them. It's a good just um, extra reading, not something that's required, not something you have to have, but like, this one's one we haven't read yet, but I think my little boys will really enjoy it. Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel. I picked that up at a used bookstore. Um, a lot of these I did. So, and also there's a couple of, if you have an animal lover, there's um, whales and dolphins. Josephine's story quilt. This was the cutest story. My daughter really loved this one. Um, dust for dinner. That one was a little depressing, but <laughs> but it's um, it was about the dust bowl and the family moved. Oh, and Barry the Bravest St. Bernard. This is such a good one, guys. Yep, Keep the Lights Burning Abbey. These are all excellent books. I recommend all of them. Uh, we haven't read this one yet. The Big Balloon Race. We'll see how that one is. Uh, some of these we might just read as like bedtime read-alouds sometimes. The Drinking Gourd. That'll be good, too. We love books. Again, I'll, um, oh, this one was a really good one. My, so my daughter, my daughter read this, and at first she saw it, and she was like, eh, I don't really want to read it. But then we read it anyway, and oh my goodness, it ended up being like one of her favorite books. She really enjoyed it. Okay, so those are just extra books to go with the Emerging Reader set. All right, so a huge storm just rolled in outside, so if you hear that, I apologize if we move on in the catalog here um, after the emerging readers you have uh, your basic package so your basic package covers let me show you the boxes here so this is our this is our main history box here that I showed you those books and over here the reading choice this is phonics and emerging readers and if you have a child that's already reading independently, they would do this drawn into the heart of reading. Um, mine are not in reading independently right now, so I'm not gonna look at that today. If we go back to our learning through the history side here, I'll show you this box right here is um, a rotating box. This changes each day. So in this box, they're gonna do geography and timeline and history projects and things like that. This is a lot of hands-on right here that helps them connect um, different areas of study to their history. And on one or two days a week, I can't remember how many days, but I think at least one day a week, um, maybe more, they do a science activity. And the science ties in with what they're learning in history. So for this one, this is unit one, which means week one, basically. You have a unit is five days um, in this, um, in this guide, in this program. So you're on day two and we have a science box today and you're gonna talk about the oceans and ocean currents and they get to do a fun project uh, that's all about kind of just learning about ocean currents and how that works. And this is these are simple projects that they schedule in here. So you'll have the supplies most likely on hand. It's not something you really have to prepare for, which is awesome when you have a lot of kids you're teaching and um, I don't know. I really appreciate that, that it's, it's simple projects that uh, we can do quickly without a whole lot of prep time. And then the text connection here. So this is where um, this basic pack comes in. 
So the connection is right here, God's Wonderful Works. This is the science book. So this is where they, they really, this really is a connection though. So they learn about science from you as you go through this box with them and they do whatever activity it might be and you talk about the science topic. And then they'll go over to this book and they get to read about it. So I think this is page 45 they're supposed to do this day. You don't read straight through this book. You actually just turn to the parts that um, have to do with what you're learning in science that ties into the history. So for this day, they would talk about God made the seas and you'll read through this page and look at the picture with your child. It's simple and it connects to the history. It keeps their interest. Um, my kids really like doing science this way. And then you've got your Bible study. So for Bible study, once a week they have this cute little devotional. I think it's once a week. Maybe it's more than that. But they have this cute little devotional book that you'll read through with your child. And you talk about um, character traits. And they're always learning a new verse. Each unit they have a new Bible verse that they're memorizing. And you just talk with them about um, the Bible verse and what's it, what it means. And it actually connects right back to the history. So this rotating box connects to the history. The Bible box connects to the history. And this corresponding music goes along with Bible. So whatever verse they're learning in Bible, they are hearing it as a song with this corresponding music. And this is... These are the, the music discs that you get. So this is Hide Him In Your Heart Volume 2, which is also a part of this basic package right here. So you get your science, your devotional book, and your music in this basic package. And those are covered in um, the boxes that I just talked about. Next thing in the catalog here is math. You have two choices for math. You have 1A and 1B, or 2A and 2B that are written into this guide. They use Singapore, so here's Singapore, 1A and 1B, which are written right into this box right here. Now, if you have a kid that is um, above 1A and 1B, they would use 2A and 2B right here. You don't have to get the textbooks for these, and I'm gonna show you why. So for Beyond, this math box covers workbook 1A and then later on 1B. But there's also an activity that they have written here. So you're getting a hands-on approach as well. So you're gonna um, use some kind of manipulatives, and it's usually stuff just from around the house. It's real engaging, the kids like this, it's simple and effective and then they get to after they do this little activity with you they'll turn to their workbook so for this one I'll show you they would just do this exercise in the book they would do page 9 and they do page 10 and that is it for math for the day and that's enough they do great they retain this really well I've noticed so Singapore is written into Heart of Dakota and that's where I'm still debating whether I'm going to go with uh, Singapore or The Good and the Beautiful, and yeah, I am leaning towards Singapore, but I have to decide on that. If you do have a child that needs to use 2A and 2B, in the appendix of the guide, you're going to find the math alternate schedule, and this is where it's going to show you, um, so for unit one, day one, textbook 2A, page six through eight, workbook 2A, page seven through nine. So these don't have the hands-on activities. Instead, you would actually have your textbook also. So you would go off of the textbook pages and you would walk through these textbook pages with them. And then it'll say right in the textbook too, let me show you. After you go through this textbook portion, you'll get to a little flag here that says workbook exercise four or whatever it is for the day. And that's when you turn over to your workbook and you would do the work in the workbook. So that is your alternate schedule in this guide. If you happen to have bigger hearts for his glory, um, <clears throat> which is the next guide up, this uh, math 2A and 2B also has activities written in the box, the math box right here in that guide. 
Um, so if you happen to have that, you can you can just use that guide only for the math if you wanted the hands-on portion as well. But you don't have to. You can just use the um, the back of the book, use the alternate schedule that's back there if you have someone who's doing 2A and 2B. So that's the only time that you would really need the textbook is if you're doing it that way. Otherwise, you really just need the workbooks and you follow right along with what the guide tells you to do. The last part in the catalog here that I want to show you guys is this deluxe package, which is your reading choices. So these reading choices are this story time box right here. So you have a story time box every single day, and in that story time box, they get to read with you. You actually read these aloud. Heart of Dakota has different packages you can choose from. Me and my boys are gonna go through these books this year. And it's not just reading these aloud, because in that box you also have information that's teaching your kids about the different um, the different genres. And it's real light. It's not like heavy duty stuff that you would learn in high school or junior high or something. It's it's at their level. It's learning about the different types of um, of stories, of written works, of literature. Um, and they also learn about godly character traits. They learn about different story elements. They practice narration out loud with you, which they also do in history. I'm trying to think if there's anything I left out. If you guys have any questions about Beyond Little Hearts for His Glory, feel free to ask. Uh, I will also share, I can't remember if I shared this already. Poetry is also used in the language arts box. Oh, that's what I didn't go over. So the language arts box. Let me... Language arts in Beyond is um, spelling, grammar, mechanics, usage, and copy work. So four days a week, they copy uh, a portion of their poem from over here in their poetry box. They don't do all of it in one day. They just do copy work. I wrote it down here at one point. Copy work is 10 minutes. So what they can copy down in 10 minutes, that is their copy work for the day. And then they'll work on spelling. And they're either gonna do spelling from list one or list two. And that's back here in the appendix again. Um, there are about 10 words per unit. I actually got this tin to keep this year to keep our spelling words in. And in this tin, I have our spelling lists. I have list one and I have list two. I haven't finished making these. Um, I will. Just in your guide, it actually tells you to write down on uh, index cards, the um, spelling words for your child for the week so they can use that to study off of. So I've got, um, what was this? This is list one. This is unit one. I just put a little one up in the corner so I don't get them mixed up. And these are the words they'll be working on and they can take these cards out and they can use these to do whatever activity they're doing for spelling for the day. So they'll have that and they'll work on that um, either on a whiteboard like this one that I also got for my boys this year. Um, I used to have just a plain, a plain white one, but I noticed with my daughter it helped her a lot to have these lines, so I went ahead and got one with lines on it. This one's double-sided, so if my boys do better without the lines, we've got just white on this side. It needs to be cut off, I guess. I got this on Amazon. If you guys are interested, maybe I can link that below. And it comes with this little pen loop that holds their, their pen. This pen doesn't have an eraser though. I kind of like the ones with erasers, but we'll see how it goes. Paper towels work too. But they'll, um, so they do four days a week. They'll do their spelling and they'll do their copy work. And then on the fifth day, they do grammar concepts and that's written right into the guide here so i can show you this first week this first week they do have this on their website that you can look at this whole first week of plans so this is where they've written in the grammar so for this first one they're talking about a sentence and um, a sentence versus a fragment and they'll make their own sentence that day and they'll write that down either on a piece of paper or the whiteboard again and that is it for language arts for them. So that is your day at a glance for Heart of Dakota. You have your history, your poetry, your Bible, your rotating box, your music that goes along with your Bible, language arts, story time, your reading or phonics choices, and math. And that is your entire day. It takes about two to two and a half hours. Um, sometimes we'll even do this story time at night because I have other kids in um, another guide 
uh, that I do during the day. And if we just feel like we're short on time, we'll do this story time box at night. We might not even read the actual box, but we'll just read these awesome books because they are awesome. I haven't come across any of these books that we haven't loved. And yeah, so I have two sets of these too that I'm gonna be reading this year. These ones are for my boys. We don't read them all at once, you know, one book at a time throughout the year. And then I have a whole different set that I'm gonna be reading with my girls. And their stuff is down in the bottom there. Actually, I don't even think their reading set that we're doing at night is in there. I'll go over that in another video. That one is preparing hearts for his glory. Um, I can't think of anything else at the moment. If you guys have any questions or want to see anything else more in depth, let me know. Oh, also, this is not part of Heart of Dakota, but these are some books that I have that um, are excellent. So when we learn about nouns and verbs, I already have these books, and these are great. If you guys have seen these, they're fun. The kids can even read these, and it just kind of um, helps them understand. And then this, my son asked me if he could have this book. <laughs> he wants to learn all about the body this year and he is my little, my math whiz and my sciencey kid. So we're just gonna read through this as kind of a read aloud actually. Um, I actually got the MP3 on, um, this is Apologia, I went on the Apologia website and got their MB MP3 read aloud of this so he can even listen to this himself if he wants to. He's already flipped through these pages like a hundred times, my cute little boy. Um, Heart of Dakota does teach human body, but it's in later guides. It's not in these younger guides, so he'll get it a second time. This is just because he's interested in it, and it's got some fun stuff in it. So, yeah, so we're going to be doing that just kind of as an extra thing on the side. So one last thing I wanted to show you guys is in the back of the book for the appendix, I'm actually going to take these little post-it sticky tabs and I'm going to make tabs for each of the sections that I'm going to be flipping to often and that helps a whole lot when you're um, going through your day and you need to flip back and forth and um, yeah so I can show you guys anything else you're interested in just let me know in the comments thanks for watching guys I will see you in the next video